Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, this is Andy from De Cobos Grotto uh, coming to you with another sort of build it idea. Um, I've been doing a lot of videos regarding uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons before, uh, then you'll know that the table is pretty covered in paper, pens, maps, miniatures, and all sorts of other bits, which leaves very little actual space for dice uh, to be rolled. Um, which is ultimately one of the points of the game. Um, so what I've decided to do is build a dice tower um, and I'm going to make a dice tower that resembles uh, a piece of terrain or scenery um, that's suitable for uh, Dungeons and Dragons but also maybe for some other games like Bushido where space is premium um, and can be played in, in small spaces. Uh, so I'm going to get straight down to the board and I'm going to show you what I'm making. Up. So, here we are again. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, you might remember for one of my builds, uh, when I made a demonic portal, I cut off the top of the Pringles, uh, or the bottom of the Pringles tube, uh, to use as the portal. Well, this is the rest of a Pringles tube. Um, it's partly sized because that's how I like to... Uh, oh no, that's not better. So, um, we've got the, the bottomless Pringles tube. This is going to form the basis of our tower. Um, so, for those of you who haven't made a demonic portal, why not? Um, but then uh, what you can do is just take your tube and that's what we're going to use as a basis. Now with dice towers uh, they need a very small footprint which is the point so um, what I've done is I've got a collecting base at the bottom so when the dice roll out of the tower they've got somewhere to go um, and all I've done is I've taken some foam board uh, some black foam board which is the one I use for most of my builds um, and I've cut off a sort of footprint for it um, with the Pringles tower sort of marked in the middle there so that we know just how big it is and where they're going to roll to. Um, and just so that it fits in the middle of the screen, all I've done is I've beveled the edge uh, off with a sharp knife just so you, you can just sort of bevel the edges off just to give it a, I don't know, a relief um, look if you like so that it looks like it all mingles with the rest of the scenery. So once I've got that, um, what I want to do is I want to uh, prepare my tube because my tube is where it's going to be, uh, all the action is going to be. Um, for the baffles, I've been looking quite a lot online on how people do these things and I've decided to use um, cocktail sticks for my baffles rather than um, sort of cardboard baffles that try to flip the dice. Um, I've found those don't really work that well. They just kind of slide the dice from level to level. Because if we use cocktail sticks, it should tumble the dice so you can get a truly random roll. So what we do is um, we need a, a place for the dice to roll out of. So we need a, an exit point at the bottom. So I'm just going to take a felt tip pen um, and my trusty ruler and I'm going to mark out on here um, where I want my door. I want this to be a fairly robust uh, tower so lots of big dice can go in, Bushido dice or bolt action dice as well as uh, smaller dice with the other genres. Um, the door I'm going to make about an inch and a half. As always I'm going to make this stuff up as I go along. I'm going to make about an inch and a half high and you want it fairly wide so that the dice come out of the, uh, of the door and uh, across the top there I don't know if I found an easy way to do this um, so just kind of go Sort of roughly works, doesn't it? And then I'm going to use my sharp knife just to tailor that off. Okay, and I'm going to do that off camera. So what we've got is uh, just the the bottom cut out. I'm going to keep that in case I need it for uh, another little piece. So let's just cut out the bottom, um, and that will stand up quite nicely there. You can just probably see it on camera. Um, what we need to do is to start at the bottom. Really, we need to uh, work our way up. Um, we need to, to, to have a, a little ramp at the bottom so that the dice eject from the tower and into the garden. So um, I'm going to use the lid 
from the, the Pringles tube, the plastic lot lid that goes on the top. Um, and I'm going to use that because it's nice and pliable, it's nice and soft. Um, and we're just going to kind of bend it a little bit. Okay. What we do is we'll work at the bottom and it needs, just needs to go up, up into the tube. Um, and it will go at an angle just because that's the only way it will fit. And it will go at the right angle that we need. Um, but we need it to be flush against the tube. It's probably difficult to see because of the nature of the beast. So that's how we need it to be. We need it at an angle so it ejects the dice out of the tube. So what we can do next is keeping our, um, our tube tight to the tight to the floor. We just need to um, mark out with our pen where the door is. Because we just want to trim out that plastic so that there's not a lip. Um, we're putting it upside down in there so that the we're going to keep the rim of it. We're going to keep the rim of it up until the door. We're just going to cut that rim of the door out, and because it's soft plastic, it should just cut nice and easy. Just going to use. A sharp craft knife, like everything else, so it's got to be sharp, and that's it. And so it just cuts the lip out, so you can see it there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some carpenter's cork just to cork it up into the tube. Once I've done that, I'll come back and show you the result. So what I've done is I've used uh, some carpenter's cork just to seal the bottom of that. You can just see it at an angle there. Um, <coughs> and if you just get some test dice um, and pop them in the top there, there's just got some normal two dice. Uh, hopefully you'll see the yeah you just see them as they come cruising out. So obviously we need to do something about that. Right. Um, the, uh, in the middle of this build I've had a little bit of trouble with the video camera so uh, when I actually placed the internal baffles into, um, into the tube um, that bit of video has been corrupted so I've re-recorded it so this will be in the middle of the video in the right place uh, but it might be a bit weird seeing a different colour tube um, and obviously my um, commentary uh, doesn't make sense either but what we need to do is we need to make the internal baffles, which is the bit that tumbles the dice um, down the tube and out into the courtyard of our, our tower. So um, what we have to do is th there's two different ways to do it really. There's a kind of um, a slide baffle if you like, so there's a solid um, uh, baffle in the middle, a bit like you know, using um, a bit of card and having those slopes, so they slope from baffle to baffle. But I don't that doesn't actually tumble the dice. Um, all that does is slide the dice from one baffle to the other, unless the baffle moves itself as well independently, in which case you've got to do a kind of moving hinge type effect. And that's a bit complicated. So I went for a rather simpler way of doing things. I'm going to use cocktail sticks to, to provide baffles. Now, what I need to do is I need to place them in a, a random way so that the tumble will always be different each time um, depending on where it goes in the in the tower. So uh, what I've done is uh, going to get the tube um, and with the tower build itself um, we've got to make sure that we've got the slide cover uh, clear of where the baffles are going to go and the top part as well. So we're only going to go in the kind of middle third if you like but we need to put in about three or four baffles in there preferably more if you can um, but in this particular tube it's a bit small so you can't do it so I'm just going to show you how it's done so I'm just going to take um, a skewer or a, a knife or I've got these um, tweezers uh, these um, snips and I'm just going to use a pointed end just to drive a hole in the side of the Pringles tube and I need to do it on the other side opposite where that is so roughly in line 
with where that is. So just hole and then cocktail stick through the first hole and into the second hole so it makes that um, and then you can either chop it at the ends but I didn't do that what I've done is I've hot glued each end so that it stays in place and that doesn't matter to me because you will you see at the end of the build those little lumps are going to cover up with the, the texture paint um, and the other bits and pieces that will make it so that it just becomes part of the outer wall. I lift them in because it just provides a little measure of strength. And then randomly um, drop it down an, an inch or two. And then, because you want to fit the dice in between the baffles, and then do another hole. So if you look, take an ordinary dice um, and then go round, you want it to tumble, so it needs to be lower than the next one. So I'm going to go to about there. So we're going to go lower than that hole that I've just done. And then I'm going to go around to the opposite side. I'm not going to put any baffles in this particular tube because this is just my replacement tube. Let's just get this in there. Sorry, this seems a bit rushed. Just a bit annoyed that the previous video didn't get out. I'll show you on the original build. But what we're going to try to do is get that kind of effect. So as you can see, it is lower. It's lower down by at least a dice and a bit, sort of width. Okay? And it's at a cross angle. And again, we come down with our dice certain length and then we need to just come across at a different angle make a hole come round the opposite side make another hole and stick another baffle in so what we're trying to do is create a weird tumble pattern just so the dice cannot miss hitting a baffle on the way down. Now I did on my build at the end, and you'll see a f um, I did four four of these. Sorry, no, I did five of them in the end, um, all crisscrossed around, just so that it makes a different track. Um, and when we stick the, the, the final baffle on the top, which is the kind of cupping part that drifts into the middle, and you'll see that on the last, next part of the build, it will push the dice down so that you can't load the dice on one side and miss certain baffles and therefore you know, kind of cheat the roll, if you like, by going down there and missing the baffles. We're going to try and scoop it into the middle so that you can't see see where to place the dice and miss certain baffles and kind of load the dice roll. So we are going to avoid that um, and you'll see how we do that in the next part of the build. Right, so what we've got then uh, is um, we've got baffles uh, and they're all glued in so that's fine. Um, knowing my dice group, or my gaming group I should say, not my guy, dice group, um, they're always a little bit rough and ready with the dice, always throwing them around. So what I don't want is those baffles to break. To that end, I think what I need to do is have a sort of scoop thing at the top um, so that the dice get put into it and the dice then tumble um, a bit more controlled um, to save some of the baffles and the plastic in the bottom. So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to take some foam um, I use this quite a lot, it's, uh, it's just like a fun foam from the range and it's a bendy um, like toy foam for kids and they make fuzzy felt shapes out and stuff like that. Um, what I've done is I've just taken a circle that is bigger than the um, than the Pringles tube top sorry the camera is a bit too close is, uh, uh, is bigger than the, tu the tu tu uh, Pringles tube top um, I just used a mug, a large mug um, and then I split it down the middle in half 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a funnel shape um, that fits at the top of the tube. I want it to be fairly steep, so I want the um, the diameter to be a little bit larger than the um, than the Pringles tube, so that it's that the dice actually sort of fall into the middle, which is where I want it to be, and then I'm just going to glue that in the top but before I do that obviously I need the dice to fall through the middle so I need to cut out the middle as well so that the dice can fit through at least one at a time we don't want them to be too much like I say a controlled pull rather than um, than anything else so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark out where it is that I want it at my tube to start and then I need to decide where the dice come. And then I will just mark that out. It doesn't have to be precise or anything like that. Um, just find a, a little round to go around it. It doesn't have to be precise, but what I'm aiming for is roughly big enough for a dice to go in the middle and then I'm going to cut that out. Uh, so what I thought I'd use is a, a 40mm base um, that I recently got from a great little local firm called Debris of War. Just to shout him out, it's a 40mm resin base. Um, there you go. It's, uh, just the right size I think and I'm just going to um, just cut that out as carefully as I can not particularly worried about it being particularly accurate or anything like that because um, I'm not that worried I just want a hole in the middle I'm sure there are neater ways and maybe using a pair of scissors rather than a knife. We might be able to cut it out a bit neater. But I'm not particularly worried. And there we go. So when this folds over, it should have a hole big enough for it to fall through, which it does. Okay, uh, and that's going to be um, the first part to my tower. So it's going to sit on the top there, and I'm going to glue that in. Sorry, the camera's not great for this particular project. And that's going to glue in like that, so that we have a, a baffle, or not a baffle, but a, a kind of um, cushion for the dice to drop down. And I'm just going to glue that in there with some C. So um, that's really the nuts and bolts of it. So I just kind of glued that on there. So that's a funnel shaped uh, little sort of um, scoop, if you like. I, I'm trying to struggle to find the right words. So um, that's really the nuts and bolts of the tower. Uh, that can work as it is. Obviously, the dice is just going to rattle out the bottom. So we're going to still get quite a big footprint. We're going to deal with that in the base in a moment. I'm just going to finish the, the tower itself with just some decorative stuff. Um, because at the moment it's just a Pringles tube on the table um, there's going to be plenty of those when I play D&D &D, uh, but with crisps in it um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd make it look like a tower block or a, um, a dungeon tower uh, not a dungeon tower, a sort of castle tower um, and to that end I'm going to put a kind of stone like effect around it um, and some battlements just to make it fun um, First of all though, I'm going to put some window frames and door frames so it looks like there's some archer sort of um, windows and the the shoot bit is going to have a little frame as well just to give it some extra detail. Um, I'm going to use my phone for that um, be just because it, it gives some sort of bass relief um, to the way that the, uh, the surface will look. So I'm just going to draw on the phone some windows, just some arched windows, just to give it some, like I say, some 
flavour. You don't have to do any of this, you can just leave it as it is. Um, it will work for perfectly well, but uh, it just looks a little dull. So I'm going to just do some towel windows. Uh, and the funny foam, just with a ballpoint pen, give it a little bit of a dig. Um, and I'm just going to put some random sized blocks on it so it looks like it's stonework. And that's that. I need to press a bit firmly because obviously I don't want the the foam to um, to go back to its natural shape because that's what it will tend to do. And then I'll just cut out the middle and we'll just cut out the middle first. Sorry if this is a bit dull. I'm trying to keep the video a bit short. That's it. Mm. Cut the middle first, take her in a brass hand group. Here we go, and we've got a little um, window, and I'm just going to super glue these on um, in sort of randomish ways, but not over where the hot glue gun was going to go. So with the door, all I did was I took the um, the piece that we cut out from the the bottom of the sprinkles tube, and I've drawn around it to give me a size of the door, and then a little bit more around it to give me um, a door frame. Again, just using the same technique, I've just drawn some stone into it. Um, you could use coffee stirrers to make it a wooden, a wooden door frame, um, or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. Whatever um, suits your aesthetic, aesthetic really. Um, when I make my next dice tower, it's going to be for Bushido, so uh, it will be in the sort of style of a, a samurai or Damio's tower, if there was such a thing. I'll have to look up the historical preference for that really. Um, but we'll come up with something very suitably oriental feeling. So that is just, like I say, just that cut through um, and that will fit just over the door and just gives it a little something else, just a little bit of relief um, for when you're painting it and just make it look a little bit more interesting. I'm going to glue that on. Um, I've only done two two windows. I might do one more, um, but I don't need to overdo it. Um, the stone will just start to pick up and, and give it some feel to it. And then we'll move on to the battlements. Right, so the last little bit on the on the actual tower itself then before we go on to the base um, is just to do the battlements. Um, and what I've done is I've just taken some foam board and I've peeled back the um, the paper for the foam board just to reveal the, the foam on the inside um, and then I've made them into slabs um, I've made two different lengths of slab um, they're all two centimeters width but I've just done it uh, slightly different lengths um, doesn't have to be too neat again just to, perform, uh, to provide that kind of crenellation um, and then all I'm going to do is simply put some carpenter's cork around the top of the, the tube I'm going to use carpenter's cork so that I don't melt the foam and I've taken the paper off uh, of the foam so that I can um, weather the foam later on um, rather than just leave that kind of cardboard look so I'm just going to put a big old bead of carpenter's cork right around the edge I'm going to do it a bit at a time obviously Again, it doesn't have to be neat or tidy, just plenty of cork on there. And then, excuse me, I want to drop it all over the place. Just going to take the foam, uh, take the small piece first, 
and give yourself plenty of uh, crenellation at the top. I'm not going to be standing any miniatures on it, so it doesn't really matter if it's particularly neat or tidy. And just gently press in, um, and we'll turn, alter, alternating the um, the short and the tall blocks as required to make a basic crenellation. I'm going to do that all the way around and I'll come back to you. So to progress the build then, um, what I've done is I've just stuck some filler underneath the uh, battlements, um, the crenellation so you can see, just to join uh, the crenellations to the body of the Pringles tube. Um, you don't just didn't video it because it's a little bit boring, just me smearing filler on it. Filler cost a quid from uh, Poundland, so uh, that's all that came to. Um, now what we need to do is just pop the tower onto the base, um, and we're going to do that with some carpenter's cork in just a moment. What I want to do though is we need to capture the dice as they come down from the dice tower, um, so we need to make some walls to go around. Basically the tower is going to sit on the base there, um, it will come out of the door, and then it will need to, to be stopped in the small footprint, hence why we're doing the dice tower in the first place. So what I've done is I've got some foam board and I've just ripped off the paper um, and I've just drawn on um, some walls. So drawn some stone into the wall with a wallpoint pen um, that will give it that 3D effect that we can just add to the build. Um, I've left the last little bit so I can do it on uh, camera for you. Um, and that will just sit something like that just to catch the thing um, because obviously we want it to look a little bit like terrain I'm actually going to make one of them um, a gate so it looks a little bit more realistic although it doesn't need to be it can just be walls um, or just something just to represent and stop the dice from tumbling out onto the table itself so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a little um, a little gate in there uh, it doesn't need to be anything special, but I'm just going to draw it onto the um, foam board so it's got a 3D effect. And I'm going to do that just by drawing a couple of little lines to represent the gate posts. And then you can just draw some wooden pieces on it if you like. It's no problem. Draw a middle piece so it looks like two gates. Remember, this is just. Uh, to give it some kind of character really more than anything else um, and I'm going to do it on both sides like I say I want this to be a 3D effect and I want it to look very pleasant so I'm just going to draw those lines on again so it's on the other side just repeat it it doesn't have to be neat or tidy and I'm just going to draw it on so it looks like planks. And for the other parts of it, I'm just going to draw uh, bits of stone to match the other bits of walls that I've done. And that's just drawing random lines here, there to represent little mini stoneworks. And the pattern is fairly random. It just needs to be replicated on both sides of the uh, foam board. So that's all I'm doing really. Nothing special, nothing particularly fancy. Just on the tops as well. You don't need to do it on the sides because I've already done that on the other bits. Just make it look relatively realistic. It doesn't have to be too realistic. Remember, this is just a dice tower. It's not actually terrain. Although that said, you know, it could form part of the terrain as well, part of the board, just to add a different element to your table. So that's all that is. It just looks like stone. And all we're going to do is just use carpenter cork 
to fix everything down. Once everything's fixed down, then we can start to think about how we're going to decorate everything. That's all the stuff uh, that we need to do separately. Again, don't worry about uh, the Pringles Tower being pretty undecorated because we're going to use some textured paint. I'll show you what we're going to do just to make that slightly different. So I'm going to use some carpenter's cork. What I've got to remember with the carpenter's cork, of course, is that the dice needs to exit the tower at some point. So we need to leave an area of the build without any cork on it where the dice come out of the tower. So I'm just going to leave a little C shape there. I'm going to take my tower and I'm going to press it into the cork. doesn't matter if it spills over because we're just going to make that part of the build. So don't worry too much if it looks a bit messy. We can just use our finger just to draw it round. I just want to cement that tower onto the board. So I'm just going to use my fingers just to draw a bead around it. And that's where it's going to be. Say don't worry too much. Because we're going to texture the board up. Uh, anyway, once we start to um, use our basing techniques, again I'm just going to draw the carpenter's cork around the base, making sure we've got a good seal. And that the tower is nice and secure. What we want is the tower to be secure because let's face it, we need to uh, need this needs to be practical. And in the excitement of a game, um, people get tend to get a little bit uh, gung ho with the equipment with the terrain. I always try to make my terrain a little bit more robust than is necessarily aesthetic uh, because gamers do get a little bit carried away, and the amount of times I've spent hours on terrain uh, only for it to be broken. So. Just get it locked down. But the main point is not to obstruct the way that the um, the dice are going to exit the tower. That's the most important bit. Is that the uh, the dice can exit the tower nice and freely because we want them out of the tower. We don't want them stuck in there, um, causing an obstruction um, or getting stuck. We have to find some way of getting them out. So that's that bit there. While it's still drying, um, we can attach those um, walls that we've built as well. And again, we're going to use the carpenter's cork. And they can go on there as well. And all I'm going to do with that is I've kind of just shaved off a little bit so that it fits the, uh, the contours of the tower as well. So it goes up against the, the tower wall nicely. Um, those are the pieces we're going to do. So I'm just going to lay some cork on the bottom of the walls. Again, nice and liberal with the cork. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy because we can use our finger to tidy it up. But not only that, we can add it as part of the build as well. So I'm just going to add Excuse me, get my head and my hands in the way. Just press it on there. And this is going to capture all the dice. I'm just going to use the end piece here, or the middle piece, I should say, with the gate. This is done. Get both ends put. No fork on. And then just press that into place as well. Like I say, I'm not being excessively neat or tidy in the way that I'm putting this together. 
Um, because we can always rescue it in the uh, in the basin, but also it's a medieval tower, so why won't we? So a little bit of cork on the end, a lot of cork on the base. Sorry, we're not seeing this on camera, so it's my fault. So just draw a bead of the cork. And a little bit where it connects to the tower. Cool. Having my uh, confusion, I've put it on the wrong side. Of course. Maybe I shouldn't have had the glass of wine with the dinner. So just no big deal. Just connect that up to the base. Just use your fingers to smooth out the cork will be fine. Press down nice and firmly so that it glues on. By the way, I don't advocate uh, drinking red wine while you're playing with sharp tools. I did all that beforehand. So, just a little disclaimer there. It will help the safety disclaimer. And that should be um, everything put together. We're going to let that dry and then I'll show you the last bit of the texturing. Okay, uh, so um, we've got to the stage where it's uh, everything's working. Um, I'll just uh, quickly prove that. I've just got a couple of dice in there and there they are, they're working. So I'm just going to just decorate the last bit of it to paint it up um, and then I will do a quick test for you so you can see how it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a um, textured paint that I've made myself um, from, uh, we're going to use chinchilla sand, chinchilla bath sand, um, polyfiller or spackle if you're American and watching this. Um, and uh, some PVA glue and some black acrylic paint, all that I've bought from um, Poundland. So each of those costs a pound. I've had them from other builds, so in fact, this build is costing me nothing, um, any extra that I've already paid for. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the base uh, in it to give it some kind of um, Texture, obviously, that's why I'm using texture paint, just to give it something to uh, dry brush later on. Um, that's going to be the courtyard there. And then I'm also going to cover um, the the bare walls of the tower as well. I'm not going to cover the wall here, the um, the walls here, because that's already textured uh, through drawing onto the um, onto the foam, and I'm also not going to do it on the battlement either. So I'm just going to carry on painting this. Um, I'm pretty sure you know how to paint things. Um, so I'm going to make sure everything's covered in my texture paint and I'll get back to you once I've painted the whole thing up um, and then we'll do a little test. Right, uh, so this is my complete tower. Um, what I've done is I've painted it up. Uh, I just used uh, black undercoat um, acrylic paint. Um, mixed with some uh, filler and some PVA glue and a bit of chinchilla wash sand thing, very fine grade sand. Mixed it all together and used it as an undercoat um, which gave it that rough surface um, and then I used uh, um, some house paint, some grey house paint just to dry brush the lighter emulsion, that's the word I'm looking for, um, some lighter greys up until that sort of colour uh, and then all I've done is I've used a homemade moss uh, out of flock, green flock, uh, PVA glue um, and a bit of green paint and I just lather that on to make the sort of vines and that's it really. Um, I used some um, just some brown paint just to make a courtyard. I didn't want to put any grass or anything in the middle uh, because I want the dice just to roll out and, and be as flat as I can. Uh, obviously with the gates are just made a kind of brown. Again it's not actual terrain as such but it can be. Uh, it's just something to blend in with your table really. So I've got the flowers and grass on the bottom. So that's that. Uh, last little bit obviously is to show that it works. Uh, so I've taken two dice, just standard uh, dice that you can just, uh, I've got mine free from a 
convention I went to um, and it needs to be shown as random so here we go we've got two ones double ones I'm just going to pop those into the dice tray and that it comes it's a one and a three we'll do it a couple of times so you know that it's random ones again so you can see they're ones again uh, five and a four uh, ones again three and a four a one and a two ad nauseum you can just keep doing this notice that my luck my dice rolls still I still can't ride double six that's my luck I'm afraid so as you can see I can place them on the sides and put them in there it's still a random roll so the baffles will just tumble the dice for you and that's what you need I want to see. so there is my um, there's my uh, dice towel hope you've enjoyed the build um, my name is uh, Andy from Dugobo's Grotto um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video